I'm Mike Stu. This is Tom. And this is our Greek ballista. Mm -hmm. And so this basically is it's an ancient giant catapult crossbow thing that shoots. Uh, Tom is holding the ammunition in his hand. It's that giant stick. So they they use it. something fairly more deadly. You know, something that would kind of kill you. Yes. Um. <laughs> So this is the box that creates all the tension that basically makes it fly. Pretty much. To um, make this box, we had to first start off, start off by, you know, obviously constructing a box. But on top of the box, we have these... Yeah, right there. What would these be classified Octagonal as? Octagonal rotator disc things. Your left finger. Octagonal rotator discs. Things. And move a little things. closer. Of course. Basically, what this does is you would turn the dowels on this. Obviously, I can't do it now because the tension is too tight. Literally, it would be too tight to move by normal means. But, uh, Explain how you did get it that tight. What? We twisted it. With what? Hands. Hands and hammers. Hammers. Using the you know, we'd, ha we'd have to, like, hammer it to the side. Hammer it to the side. Basically, the string twists enough, like, it's incredibly strong. How many feet of string, of uh, rope do you have there? It's 100 feet. I know. 50, so there's okay. 50 feet on each side, right? Yes, there's 50 feet on each side of the rope. Alright. So obviously these are very strong. There's similar ones on the, bo on the bottom right here. It, um, it moves up and down using this uh, bolt right here. It's basically like aiming. And then these go right through the string, which is incredibly tense. So, and we obviously had to do this step by step. We put these in, and then, you know, later when we were finishing it up, we strung it. But when you string it, pull it back like this. Triggering. There you have it. It's strong. The tension is huge. You know, this is going to snap back right here. We've got our um, leg, which if we were standing this up, we could mount it. Mm -hmm. And the finished product. It doesn't do what we expected, but, you know, we had two weeks. We we worked with what we had in this I think it's straight to Just use your hand now. Three, two, one, fire. Whee! This basically supports all the weight. Okay, Um, this is made out of a uh, table that Tom had. An old, an old workbench. Yeah. Good cut. But... We brought a uh, piece of wood right here. Made the uh, measurements and cut it through the table. So it stands in there and it's mostly supportive. And then um, we attached two other pieces of 2x4 to it, which we cut. And then we made the, um, the bolt going through all four of these pieces as a uh, fulcrum point where we'll pivot and that's pretty much it yeah, pretty much firstly this is a little slot that the bowstring sits in which goes like this that, Mike. Okay, it's not supposed to do that, but it goes, it goes like this. It sits in there. And then, this notch is here for the arrow to rest. It's actually called a bolt, but for the bolt to rest in. And then, let's just take it off for a sec. Alright. It's miss fire. Ooh. And then, there's a little notch underneath here that catches on this pistol-like thing shaped thing and when you pull this up 
where the, the notch lets string. it go, and it and can the, go forward. The tension from the string. Here's the notch. You can see the uh, the marks from the pistol. And... So this is actually a traditional crossbow trigger, not a ballista trigger. We just had to adapt it. And so Why is it not resetting. So it didn't pull it back harder. <laughs> so the tension is put here. I'll show you without an arrow. It's gonna fall over backwards. So, so this rests in here. And then it would be twisting forward right now because of all the tension put on it. But the notch in the bottom is stopping it. So when I pull this up, it's hard to explain. But it I pull this up, it pivots like this and releases from it and turns like that. And if you're wondering what the staples are, this is just so the trigger notch automatically resets. Yep. And we can do it crank it out. And then if you probably just bring the flip in here. Um, we had to put washers in because the trigger was too small, but it goes right in the middle. And it aligns within this. This is actually made of two pieces because it's yeah. easier to make. It's right here and right here. So we actually attached the, um, the trigger to a rope just to be safe. Okay. And. Um, Tom's going to demonstrate how it works and we'll hold it down. So when you pull up, it releases the trigger thing and this thing spins forward, like so. This is pulled up, this is spun forward. And then to reset it, spin this back so it locks into place. And you pull this back again. And you're ready to go. Originally, there'd be so much tension you'd have to get a winch. And winch it all the way back so it locks into this, but we couldn't generate enough force for that. This also really isn't the traditional bolt. No, <laughs> this is a square bolt that we just makeshifted out of a yep. piece of siding for the house. But so originally, um, it would just be round and we'd have two feathers out the side like this and a big metal point on the end, probably bronze. Designed to kill people. Yes, this was. This, this is. Yeah, this. this. This couldn't kill people. But traditionally, this was almost two times bigger. We kind of had to make it smaller because it's a lot of wood and safety reasons. But this would be uh, two feet longer. Would be I don't know five feet taller than me. It would be pretty big. Yeah. And they'd all be building it at night to surprise the, uh, the uh, enemy city. army. They'd be sieging. This is most mainly a siege weapon, so it fires the big bolts yeah. at the walls and tries to hit the people off so then they could come in with big siege towers and thousands of troops to go kill people. Like really, you'd have a winch, you'd have a trigger, and then this bolt would just fly, do damage to the walls, like Tom said. And, and they'd be making this all at the cover of night with unconventional tools, like hammers and nails. And wood that they'd have to go and cut down trees for. We used iron tools like yes. saws and They're power steel, tools. but still, all they had was bronze. <laughs> Back in the bronze age. And um, Lowe's. Other than this, this is the uh, this is the stand. It's basically made out of four pieces of wood total. These two pieces connect to this, and there's a slit right here for adjustability, so this thing can go really high or really low. I don't know if we can adjust it yeah, right we now. Can't. We don't have the wrench. But yeah, we don't. So you can either go like this or like this or like this or just so we have stability and variability. Yeah, very versatile. Yes. Um, Closing. Well, this is our Greek ballista back from the. 700 BC, 600 BC, something like that. Back in ancient Greece, they used it for sieges on enemy castles. Probably used in the Battle of Troy, but and then nobody knows if that happened. It's true. It's true. Um, That's pretty much. Yes.